Good. I'd like you to sit up, uh, your spine aligned to the back of your head. This is known as the basic exercise. I learned it from my body teacher, uh, body ter therapist, uh, Dr. R uh, Stanley Rosenberg, a body therapist based in Denmark. So now we do the testing first. We can test for the ventral vagal function or dosa vagal dysfunction. So you're going to ask people to, I'm going to ask you to look ahead, look straight, don't, don't move your neck. Now I'd like you to now move your neck to the right and stop at the point of resistance when you can no longer turn. Notice any pain, any strain, notice how, how, how long you can rotate, how far you can rotate your neck and come back to the middle and, and do the left. And stop at the point of resistance. Notice any pain or, or any strain or so, at all. Then come back to the middle. So that's the testing, always test first. Then this is the exercise. Weave your fingers together like this. Weave your fingers together and place it at the back of your head where the brain stem is. We have 10 cranial nerves that come out of the brain stem. They serve all the social engagement pathways in our brain and body. Now I'd like you to make sure that you don't move your neck, but make sure that it's nice and firm at the back of your, uh, of your head, your, your hands. Now I'd like you to now just look at the right. Don't, don't move your, your head. Just look at the right with your eyeballs as if you're looking at the shadow of your right elbow and stay there until there's a reset of the autonomic nervous system. You're going to swallow or sigh or yawn. Your ears might be different. Mine is usually a yawn. It's going to be a release. So I just got mine right there. So once you got yours, stay there for another five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Come back to the middle. It's time to unlock the left. Do the same with the left. Stay there until there's a natural reset of the body, moving you from dorsal to vagal, from dorsal to ventral rather. rather. Stay there until there's a sigh, a yawn, or it's a swallow, all accomplished, accompanied by a sense of relief. That's good. So I've just had mine there. So five, four, three, two, one. Now come back to the middle. Sometimes you might experience a, a flustering of your eyes. It's part of the recorrection. Now, that's the hand. It takes about one minute or two, or two to, to do the exercise. Now I'd like you to test the rotation of your neck to the right. You realize it's been freed up. Go to the right again, test how, how, how far you can rotate. You realize that it's been freed. You should be able to move even up to 180 degrees if you want. You should notice that there's more flexibility with regards to your neck. Now, to test the right, the, the left, with the left hand side and test the rotation of your neck. It should be freer. So, if you've noticed that there's more freedom to your neck, the rotation, give me a thumb up. Excellent. So, you can come back to the middle now. So, this is the exercise. Now you do this repeatedly. Some of you, just in negative thinking, will lock the brainstem into a dose of vagus state again. It takes time for the vagus nerve to be strong enough to keep us in a state of healing. We always revert back to a state of shutdown and dysregulation, especially if you've gone through a lot in your life. So that's why you have to do it repeatedly every day for at least three months. So you're, sensory, you're sending sensory inputs into the fibers of the vagus nerve. So it's getting strong, stronger, just like you go to the gym to go and pull your weight. You don't just go to the gym one day and 
look like um, like Arnold Schwarzenegger when he was at his prime. So you have to go there regularly and work harder. The best way to do this, by the way, is when before you get out of bed, when you are lying on your back, just do that when you're lying on your back and do your exercise. Always remember, if you don't remember before you get up, you can do when you're sitting down or you're standing up. You have to strengthen the pathways first before you can now use it as a coping mechanism. It can still help you as a coping mechanism. Whenever you're feeling anxious, maybe you're about to deliver a project, you, you want to make sure you're in ventral, not in vagal, because you can easily be susceptible to the trigger, triggers. So you can do that. But it becomes stronger if you've already built it through repetition. So you can just call upon it and it works. If you have not done it for 20 years, you're now relying on it to save to save your, your blushes. You know, it might disappoint you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you've got to do the hard work first before we can rely on calling, calling it. And now if you have younger children who can relate with it, studies have shown that the dose of vagal dysfunction is very prevalent in almost all our uh, brain-driven conditions and psychopathological conditions. So being able to correct the autonomic nervous system from the state of close down to the state of open, state of healing, is very, very important. So uh, especially an autistic, uh, an autistic brain, the middle ear muscles, the stapedius muscles, the smallest muscle in the entire body, is used to filter out background noises. In autism, it's flaccid because it's in, it's in a dose of vagal state. So we could use this exercise to strengthen it, so that they can hear. They can, so that they can, they're able to filter that background noises. Most of the disengagement that autistic people go through is because they hear too much, too much background noises, and they can't hear people properly, and then make them to be self-conscious and they prefer to switch off, not to socially engage. And this can start to help them gradually. And you can test with test for vagal dysfunction by checking your pulses. The different ways we do that in therapy. Uh, the easiest way is to just grab somebody's pulses. You know, look at my my fing my fingers. So trace the in index finger down to your wrist and hold that you have to be very be very very uh, silent to start to see your all the other uh, uh, point start to feel your pulses right now while you're holding that take a deep breath a deep breath should, should speed up your pulses into intervals then when you're coming when your out breath she relax, she kind of extend your interval so they are not as fast. She speed it up when you're going, when you're taking some fresh air in. When you are coming out, it slows down. That's your parasympathetic nervous system. But if you have autonomic nervous system dysfunction, there's no difference. So that's what we have to correct. That shows those of Vegas tech.